Good morning and welcome to the SyncHouse demo. I'm just going to briefly walk you through how this software works and how it can help your company. First we start off with the login screen. SyncHouse is nothing more than a content management system for your industry. There is no website, there is only the software in which I'm spending my time, effort, and energy in. So when you go to sync.house, you are immediately presented with a login screen. To do that, you just log right in. And once you're logged in, you'll be presented with the dashboard. And the dashboard is very uh, intuitive, at least I'd like to think so. We are welcome to change it around as we get better. So as we add employees, they'll be added to the rank, spa rank factor. And as they use the software, they earn points for using it. That's this way competitively keeping your technicians uh, using the software and uh, filling data in, because nothing is worse than having no password when you need a password. So let's just say we start. We have no your your panel is going to have no customers. So you start off by creating a customer and you fill out this information, and the customer gets created. And once a customer is created, they'll be on the all client sector. And so we have two clients here, just a test account and a normal account. So here is an account. This is an account overview, and which point we can assign who the lead technician is, who the salesperson is for the job, what the public IP address, the control for controller. We can do speed testing on the system, and who is the last person to access this account. Then we can look at all the events that control for has pumped in. So so far, my system has reported in that everything is normal. We can create comments about the system. We can send text message to the customer. Then on top of that, we have a password vault, so we can create a new entry, and let's just say it's the Wi-Fi. And then the Wi-Fi SSID, and then we can say it's a password, or we want to generate one. Then we add the entry, and it's now added in here as a reminder that element. Now, there will be times when you have this login screen open, and you don't want to just expose the entire array of passwords. So we have the username here, but then you click show password and it will pump it out for you in a box that you can commend to. And let's say you want to edit it. You can take that and edit the entry. But once you edit it, you update the changes. That's that. So that's, that's password management. You can create this per account. On top of that, beyond that, there is now as well customer files. You can upload files, give it a name, like a PDF or a picture or what have you. And it will arrange here for that particular client. On top of that, there is service logs. You can create a service entry. There is to-do manager, things that are not done, things that are done, or things that are done, things that are not done. It goes to not done by default, so you can create a, uh, let's say, the living room. Install TV. Create the item. And then once the item is created, you can talk about the item in task detail, create comments on what happened, what needs to be done. Or you can go back to to-dos and say, it's marked done. Say, are you sure you want to mark this done? Yep, it's done. So now it falls in the done, install done. Um, and then the customer or the, so the managers can say, nope, this is not done. Mark it not done. Are you sure you want to mark this not done? It goes back into not being done yet. And then again, more commentary as to why you cannot Employees cannot delete task items. They can only move them from done to not done. They can create and move, but no deletion. That way we can see a historical record. Alarm systems, contact lists. Who do we contact? What's their role, phone numbers and whatnot. And then we can look at zone listings. What, what type of systems does it have? It's a Honeywell, Mac, CRCs, dialing numbers, zone management, add a new zone. Will it zone uh, wireless management if you're using Honeywell for A codes? I also have all the zone types for different brandings, QoS and whatnot. We can add more panels if your panel is not here. So once we get down with that, we now get into time trackers, which is battery minders, and they'll help you create battery clocks. I'm actually in the process of getting this finished here, but you can create a label for it, the battery type, when does that year expire, and then we'll have it here. It's a battery clock, and when the battery is deemed old and expired, it'll notify you, or you can declare the customer to be notified for that tracking. So then we go on to networking, and we have a network manager. These are all the network devices within my home. 
and there's a tool that you can download that will link up and scan the network and make sure that this is here. And in fact, you can even hand this to the customer because there's no moving parts within the software. Um, the software is actually quite simple. Let me open up the software here. So the software is actually very simple. It automatically boots up, and lets you know, and then it just goes through and scans and adds to the website. There's no moving parts on the customer's end whatsoever. So now that that's done, it will close. So this can also be a scheduled or automated task on some random computer within the house because it'll go away. And then once that's done, you can reload this page and it will update. Si updated 16 seconds ago. This was found eight times. And on top of that, we can go to all these devices in the house. That's networking. Then we go to speed test and we can run a speed test, which will do a internal speed test for the system. Now we don't need to do that right now because we already have results here. So if we look under speed results, there is a historical record. So here's this is the first element, first re registration for this account. It tells you where the provider is, the ping, and whatnot. So if I scan again, it'll start building a track record graph. That way you can prove to the customer that their internet is slow and it's not your system's fault. So that's that. Then we get into automation logging, and this is uh, a neat part in which uh, I've covered earlier on another video is how to use the SyncHouse controller. You can download the Control 4 driver and install it in your system. There'll be a sync code that they paste into Control 4, and now they have a, you have timer testing, which checks in every 10 minutes to the controller and says, hey, are you doing okay? And the controller reports back that everything's normal, and you can update a Control 4 variable saying otherwise, or you can create test commands that will show up in the logs and if you need to react on something like you need to send a code back when if something fails you can create a cloud event that returns an action saying if something fails then do this that's how that works and there's not much going on with Crestron or Savant software just yet but that's how that works and then on top of that we can keep going back so back to the dashboard again we have services where we have work orders and whatnot. Work orders isn't quite there yet. There's nothing here yet. I'm still working on, on that. So this is a progression of what you'll be seeing as it currently is. Then there's phone messages. You can make a phone call. You can send a text message. And that gets done with the phone settings. You use a Twilio account with an SID. You just sign up for a Twilio and buy a number there and pin it in. You can upload your picture, create a company name, company email, rates. Uh, you can go to employee management, and track and manage employee accounts. This is everything that they have done. This is their actually their record of work. Then you can also look at employee tracking, and this is how every employee has worked. It tells you where they, what vault they're accessing and whatnot. Then on the home page, it will tell you the two the accounts that are basically being moved upon at the time. So there, so there's that. And we have support, so there's an online phone book, which we have all the public numbers. You can add a public number, so that way any dealer can see this number. This is just like public knowledge, collectively helping each other out. And then private number supports, like contacts you don't want to share. Employee contacts will show up on the mobile site by default. So that's that. So now let's say this. Let's say you want to go mobile. So here we are on the home page. So if we were going to do cell phone mode, this is what the mobile version looks like. Tori, you can do all the same uh, references, like the address book, you can go in and here's all the public numbers and employee handbook and dealer. And if you click on the button on the phone, it will call that number. Uh, there's also, uh, you can send phone calls, view your client listings, account, view the vault, Go back to the client home page, look at their alarm system zones, back to the home page, clients and files, upload a file from your phone. You can look at uh, the control four logs, all the events that has happened, and you can see all the network devices. In fact, this is a, a better account to show you would be the other account. The view clients, this account. So then we can go to control four logs, see some check-ins and look at the network and see all the devices that are here and you can log in to set devices with the open web button 
So that's kind of control. That's kind of how it works in a nutshell. There's not much to it just yet. There's still more being added and created. A lot of these things are in the works, but it's a very usable platform right now. We have a handful of dealers already using it at the moment. That's pretty much the rundown of it. So if you're interested in the system, let me know. If not, thanks for watching.